Let's talk about affordable solubility tools for espresso, particularly bricks versus the Otago TDS meter. Through some data collection, I found a cheap bricks refractometer is more accurate than a more expensive Otago for coffee extraction measurements. I hesitated to buy a TDS meter because I wasn't sure if it was worth the cost. The standard VST digital refractometer costs around $700, and even a lower priced one is still a few hundred dollars. Eventually, I bought a $20 BRICS meter, and later I decided to get a more expensive Otago digital meter. I collected data to help understand how well the Otago works, as well as how it compares to a cheaper tool. The long story short is the cheap meter is as accurate as the digital one, just less convenient. I wasn't sure total dissolved solids would correlate to taste. There's been some debate about it. It was a good metric for sure, but I wasn't sold on the cost of the device. I published a work on the Staccato Espresso Shot and the main critique was that I didn't use TDS as has been the standard in the barista world. Instead, I used a scorecard of seven taste metrics. These scores were subjective but they were calibrated to what I wanted in the cup. Eventually I caved and I bought a cheap bricks refractometer. I had a lot of fun examining the TDS over time of the shot, but of course some were not convinced because the cheap bricks meter is done using a eye receptacle. And there's a thought that it isn't as accurate to measure. So I decided I would get a hundred dollar refractometer until I read the reviews, which said it was really bad. And as chance would have it, I found someone selling an Otago for $200. Normally an Otago would cost $300 or more, and an Otago can be difficult to find in the US. To convert bricks to TDS, you use a simple formula, which is that TDS is 0.85 times bricks. Some have argued this metric is too simple, and this question would be resolved in comparing bricks to Otago as I shown this video. I took bricks and Otago measurements across 35 shots for a month. I usually stop the shot at a one to one ratio, but due to my experiments of extraction over time, I started measuring the rest of the shot, what I call the seconds. So I have the first shot that I drink and then the seconds is the rest. This results in 35 additional readings. Additionally, I calculated that what the TDS would be if I pulled a three to one shot by combining the one to one shot and the seconds. When I sample using the Otago, I use three drops each time. I aim to keep the process as repeatable as possible. From these results, it seems the, like the Otago and the bricks meters give similar results. The air isn't even that much ignoring a few outliers. Looking at output to input ratios, there seems to be a trend related to the TDS, which is normal considering that TDS starts very high for a smaller shot and decreases over time. There's not a connection to ratio and the difference between Otago and Bricks. Another metric Otago provides is temperature. So we can look at temperature and TDS, but there doesn't seem to be much correlation in this data. Nor does temperature seem to affect the comparison of bricks and TDS. Finally, we can do a pair T test to determine if the distributions are statistically different, which means the p-value from the test is less than 0.05. In this table, one can see the distributions are not statistically different because all the p-values are greater than 0.05. These tests were very helpful in trusting the Otago meter, but also trusting my previous results using bricks, of which I had 200 previous samples. The Otago meter has become key for me in my experiments to understand the shot better, and I hope these results help those without mo as much money to buy tools to help measure and improve their espresso, as well as other forms of coffee. And if you like this video, you should apply nine bars of pressure to the like and subscribe button.